Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times in the Catskill Mountains, we have made it to Monday morning somewhere around August 26, 2019 as you hear the work week beginning on the highway to hell uh, right through the woods here here in the Catskill Mountains and I need to get ready for my interview with uh, apocaloptimist extraordinaire Jeremy Hintz. Jeremy is the lead uh, reporter at mongabay.com, Rhett Butler's right-hand man. <clears throat> Jeremy Hance has agreed to have a conversation about apocaloptimism. And this ought to be a, uh, I've, I've warned him, I've warned this man already uh, that he's talking to a tough crowd. So I'm really looking forward and uh, I, I've, I really am going to have to uh, try not just to let our conversation uh, just turn into a free-for-all debate, but I'm going to try to be nice since, you know, it's that, uh, that eco-pussy over at Collapse Chronicles, that nice guy, Sam Mitchell, talking to Jeremy, so I will try to be nice. And you guys need to be nice in the comments when this, when this interview comes out. The third just ad hominem attack on uh, Jeremy, I will just block comments. Uh, I'm asking all of you right now, it'll be about three weeks before this interview comes out, be nice. If I can be nice to Jeremy, anybody can. Uh, Jeremy's a great guy, so it ought to be a fun interview. But before I dive into that interview, I just want to bring you my We Are So Fucked uh, Doomer headline of the day, also coming from a former uh, <clears throat> interview from my old buddy Robert Hunziker, journalist Robert Hunziker, I think is how you pronounce Robert's name. You know, he writes regularly for Counterpunch, and several of you have sent me this article that Robert has already sent me, and I assure you, Robert Hunziker is not an apocaloptimist. The man clearly understands how fucked we are and how really fucked we're getting ready to be, so I'm going to put the little dog down on this deck, on this upstairs deck, which has been, uh, <laughs> if, if this little dog can figure out how to jump off this deck again, I guess he deserves everything he has coming towards him. But anyway, for today's I shit, and here comes the sun, I, uh, I hope I have time to get through today's We Are So Fucked headline from Robert Hunziker and Counterpunch, simply titled, Earth 4C Hotter. Take it away, Robert. A decade ago, several prominent climate scientists discussed the prospects of a 4C Earth. Their concern was qualified, quote, if greenhouse gases do not slow down. If greenhouse gases do not slow down, then expect a 4C Earth by 2055. Of course, that would be, close quote, back to Robert, of course that would be catastrophic and one can only assume those scientists must have recognized real risks. Otherwise, why address the issue of 4C by 2055 in the first instance? Not only that, but the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change <coughs> back in 2007 
addressed the 4C issue in a 2009 International Climate Conference at Oxford titled Four Degrees and Beyond discussed the consequences at length, such as deserts in southern Europe, sea levels up two meters by 2100, unleashing a carbon time bomb in the Arctic, half of the world uninhabitable, etc. Well, 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 now that greenhouse gas emissions have sped up by 60% since 2010, not slowed down for one minute, the IPCC is talking about holding global average temps to two degrees C, preferably one and a half degrees C, and they say the world has 12 years to tackle global warming. Actually, nowadays, it is global heating because of massive heat intensity in certain regions of the planet, or all bets are off, which means all bets are off. Because prominent scientists address the issue of a 4C planet, and because climate scientists in general are constantly apologizing for being too conservative, too timid in their forecast as actual climate change buries their predictions with a dagger to the heart, it is a worthwhile exercise to look at a 4C world. It could happen within current lifetimes just like the scientists predicted 10 years ago. But of course, no Body knows for sure. One more time, of course, nobody knows for sure. After all, it helps to brace oneself ahead of time just in case. In all, based upon how conservatively low scientist predictions have been, for so long, maybe 4C is realistic by 2055. But beware if it happens. Infernal regions of the planet will consume vast swaths of ecosystems and life forms like a monster arising from the darkest of caves. Fortunately, this article is a fictional tale uh, at this point. Fortunately, this article is a fictional tale of what 4C would look like based upon predictions by prominent scientists 10 years ago. And even though it may be considered heresy to suggest 4C within current lifetimes, who knows? Maybe those same scientists no longer believe 4C could happen by 2055, but with greenhouse gases zooming up, it would appear kind of inconsistent not to believe it any longer. <clears throat> In 2010, the prestigious Met Office Hadley Center UK said average temperatures would likely be 4C above pre-industrial by 2055, quote, if greenhouse gas emissions did not slow down, close quote. Well, guess what's happened to greenhouse gas emissions? Asking the question is the answer. And worse yet, it would bring in its wake a 16 C rise in Arctic temperatures where at least twice the amount of carbon already in the atmosphere is frozen in time waiting to be released via permafrost thawing and 16 C 
would do that fast. Accordingly, recent scientific field studies found thawing permafrost 70 years ahead of schedule in the high Arctic. I had a rant about that a couple of weeks ago. Yes, 70 years ahead of schedule. And then he uh, links you to that study, which I've already covered. That is absolutely horrible news. And, but one more example of mind-blowing shock and awe with the rapidity of climate change vis-a-vis -vis scientists' expectations. All right, so the big question, what happens if 4C hits by 2055? The short answer has got to be pandemonium with a capital P reigns supreme according to the scientific forum four degrees hotter less quote less than a billion people will survive close quote expect on average more than a million human global warming deaths every week as such mass graveyards stacked with bodies would become a new normal. Prominent climate scientists were quoted in the Four Degrees Hotter article. Okay, according to Professor Hans Joachim Schellenuber, who has politely declined to be interviewed by Collapse Chronicles, one of Europe's most eminent climate scientists director of the Potsdam Institute, quote, at 4C Earth carrying capacity estimates are below 1 billion people, close quote. Echoing that opinion, Professor Kevin Anderson, Anderson of the prestigious Tyndall Center for Climate Change, who is politely ignored my uh, invitations to be interviewed, stated, quote, only about 10% of the planet's population would survive at 4C, close quote. A global average of 4C means temperatures would be 5.5 to 6C hotter, especially inland from coasts. The tropics would be too hot for people to live, and most of the temperate regions would be desertified. As a result, half of the planet would be uninhabitable. Populations would be driven towards the poles. Over 136 port cities, each with populations one half to one million would require seawalls or translocation of nearly one half billion people. In Europe, new deserts would spread to Italy, Spain, Greece, and Turkey as the Sahara figuratively leaps across the Straits of Gibraltar. <clears throat> In Switzerland, summer would be as hot as Baghdad today, Europe's population would be forced into a great trek north in order to survive. Even as recently as this century, the European heat wave of 2003 killed 35,000 people, but it was only a sampler of what too much heat does to the human body. And then he links you to that study. At the time, and according to the new scientist back in 2003, quote, the EPI says it is confident that the August heat waves 
has broken all record for heat related deaths and says the world must cut the carbon dioxide emissions that contribute to global warming, close quote. But today, that is a bad joke with CO2 back in 2003 at 378 parts per million. Today, it is 410. I think it's actually around 413. But anyway, therefore, must cut the carbon dioxide emissions that contribute to global warming has been a total bust. Temperature bands called isotherms will shift towards the poles faster than ecosystems can keep up. Thus, most ecosystems will collapse with breakdown of organic material leading to ever greater emissions of carbon self-perpetuating hands-free on autopilot defined as runaway global warming. Paleoclimate research suggests that the last time temperatures were foresee above pre-industrial, eventually there were no ice sheets on the planet. Sea levels were 65 to 70 meters higher than today, yet ice sheets take considerable time to lose mass even when it is really hot. Thus, the sea level rise to 2100 would likely be only a few meters, but still, get serious, it only takes a couple of meters for unmitigated disaster. In a 4C world, temperatures would vary considerably on a worldwide basis. The Amazon rainforest, the Sahara Sahel Arabia region, India, and Northern Australia would have higher temperatures than the average at any other place on Earth. Already, <clears throat> Australia gave a recent preview of hot Earth late in the year 2018 in real time when record-breaking temperatures hit hard. More than 20,000 bats dropped dead in over two days at, as temperatures in northern Australia hit 42 degrees <coughs> C, otherwise known as 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Hundreds of thousands of bony herring, golden and silver perch, and Murray cod died in the Darling River because of extreme climate. Fruit on trees cooked from the inside out. And then he links to all of those studies from Australia. That happened in today's world while average global temperatures have only reached approximately one degree C above post-industrial. What if 4C, 4C becomes reality or anything above 1C, like 2C or 3C? I uh, shit, my battery is getting ready to die. Then, what of Northern Australia and other overly sensitive heat regions of the planet. Meanwhile, global average temperatures from July 2019 were the hottest ever since 1980, and CO2 in the atmosphere as it is its highest reading in 400,000 years, a period of time when atmospheric CO2 ran 180 to 280 parts per million. And guys, if I lose the battery, uh, I'm almost done here. 
as of today, CO2 at 410 has powered through the 280 ceiling of the past 400,000 years like a hot knife through butter and even more remarkable yet, it only took a couple hundred years to break a 400,000 year record. Hands down, that is an all-time geologic speed record. Thus, the human experience has turned into a vast experiment filled with unknowns because there are no comparisons throughout human history. Earthlings have shattered all records of the past 400,000 years. What happens next is a gamble. All in all, it's somewhat puzzling that scientists are not beating the drums about the threat of a 4C world hitting earlier than expected. Maybe they are, but privately. Anyway, I want to thank Global Industrial Civilization for sticking to the end of that rant. And I have got to wrap up this rant on this gorgeous day. Here in the end times to go interview the Apocaloptimist. This is the little dog. I'm keeping an eye. That was where the little dog went through the fence. So you can still keep an eye on the chippies. But I think the little dog will not be going over the cliff. Anyway, guys, get out there and enjoy it on this gorgeous planet while you still can. Bye, guys.